We're going to look next at the estimate individual line item entry. We can go to a section individually at one of these buttons, or we can go to the whole estimate by clicking this button here and then flipping through the various sections, as can be seen right here. We'll go first to the master bedroom. We're going to take a look at the uh, takeoff for entry of the quantities which are used in figuring the individual line item quantities in the estimate. We've got a room here 14 by 12 by 8 feet high with a slope ceiling going up to 9 feet. We want to just show you what would be done to enter uh, a little bump off that room. Let's say there's an 8 by uh, 4 extension along the length of the room. We would click the Add button. We're going to offset from the length. We've also got the option of offsetting from the width or insetting. Then enter the length, 8 feet. Notice that there's a space for the number of walls which are involved. In this case, nothing is entered because uh, when we're oriented along the length, we're not increasing any uh, wall surface along the length by having a bump out in that direction. Then we'll say 4 feet and just 8 feet tall. We'll say it's a flat ceiling. In the case of a flat ceiling, there's no need to enter any slope. Slope is for, uh, obviously, for slope ceilings and for roofs, which we will go to in a minute. Uh, there's also the option if we had a triangular offset, we can look at that. We would select triangular here, and then enter the rest of the information, enter one leg of the triangle here, say six feet, and the leg along the other direction, say three feet, eight feet tall, and once again, uh, this is assuming that the, both of, both of the uh, legs of the triangle other than the hypotenuse involve additional uh, wall space. If you need to or uh, manually change that, you can do so just by selecting it, deleting it. There's also the, uh, if we need to, we can enter elliptical area, say for a window, a bay window, or some such item, or say there's a gazebo on one corner of the room, and it's uh, three quarters of a circle. In the case of a circle, both the length and the width will be the same, and the dimensions you enter are the radius. So if we have a, let's say, a little eating area, which is, uh, say, eight feet across, then we would put Four. First of all, we'd want to enter three quarters for the size, and we have four by four by eight feet. Uh, also, if there's a large window, then we want to take it off of the total amount of drywall. We select window. Let's say it is eight feet long and six feet tall. There's one of them. We'll enter a negative one because we want it to subtract this amount from the total above. So we're going to subtract about 48 feet from the wall surface area, painting, drywall, etc. Say we have a door or a couple of doors. 
and they're say six feet wide double doors and seven feet tall there's two of them enter them as a negative and it's going to take out 84 square feet of wall and 12 feet of baseboard when we do our computations once we get all this uh, entered we hit the commit for estimate and then these totals will be available in the uh, when we go to enter our uh, items for the room now we're going to back back out of this now We'll go back now and take a look at the roof. Roof takeoff is similar to a slope ceiling takeoff. You'll notice at the end of our line here we've got information for slope. We've got six different options for figuring the slope. The first two, L and W, are for a shed roof where the slope is figured originating along the length or the width. The third one is figured originating along the hypotenuse of a triangle. Otherwise, the triangle would use L or W for a slope. P figures the slope to a central peak or hip. LG is a gable roof with the slope originating along the length. WG is a gable with a slope originating along the width. These make a difference either in the square footage of the walls in the gable or roof clear story area or in the slope of the roof itself here. So we'll see how this is done by creating another slope. We're just going to duplicate what's there. 64 feet eave to eave or gable to gable as the case may be here. 30 feet eave to eave. Zero for the starting point or the lowest point of the roof and height 2 is the highest point. Now we notice that there's nothing figured at this point for the square foot of walls and that's because we haven't uh, designated a slope arrangement. Once we do that, we'll go through the various options. From the length, we see that the configuration for the square feet of walls is the same in either case, whether we use length or width. But there is a slight difference in the square footage of the slope of the roof itself. Hypotenuse does not figure any wall because the assumption, and you wouldn't use it in this case anyway, you'd use it if you had a triangle, but it assumes that there's uh, uh, the triangular sections are, in, are interior. Uh, in other words, the two walls that are sloping up are uh, adjacent to other wall spaces. Okay, for the peaked roof or hip roof, uh, we have no walls exposed, so there's no the, there's nothing added to the uh, square feet of walls. The gable with the ridge running along the length has the greatest uh, roof area and the smallest uh, wall addition. And the other configuration gives us these dimensions. So we'll leave it at LG. Uh, well, actually, we don't need this, so we'll just back out of this. And that 
is uh, the way the takeoffs are figured. 